Dan Radakovich, now the athletic director. Alonso Highsmith, now the GM of football operations. Mario Cristobal, head football coach. Just think about how far we have come over the past six months. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, including pregame and postgame on the Miami Hurricanes radio network. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen each and every day. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So whether you're an audio listener or a YouTube viewer, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And on YouTube, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Um, so it's it's unbelievable. I ran through there. Just guys. Keep this perspective for a minute. And I had to do another Saturday episode this week because so much happened this past week with all the recruiting talk we had, all the preseason betting talk that we had, and then the Alonso Highsmith story, which really, for me, came out of left field. Like, I I was not expecting uh, midweek to find out Alonso Highsmith is being hired as general manager of football operations. Like, that one was a very su uh, pleasant surprise. So I felt like we had enough to talk about that we can do a Saturday episode, but I, I rattled off those names and it's okay to feel a little spoiled right now. Um, certain people uh, have called us out, called me out, called the show out for just bathing in too much positivity that, Oh, you guys, you, you did an episode about why Miami's going to win the ACC this year. How dare you be so positive when they've done nothing but disappoint us for the last couple of decades. Guys, take a step back, exhale. I get it. Haven't played a single game yet. First season with Mario Cristobal as head coach. We're not going to be there for a few more months, but you have my permission to enjoy because in a six month span, a little less than six months, actually, because you could say early December to late May. Uh, I'm just going to call it six months for the sake of, you know, rounding it out. All right. You have gone from Blake James as your athletic director and Manny Diaz as your head football coach to being the faces of the University of Miami Athletic Department. That was the situation we were in six months ago. We go from Blake James and Manny Diaz to Dan Radakovich, who had been the athletic director at Clemson for the last 10 years. Their football program shot up to national prominence during his time there, winning national titles 2016-2018, becoming the powerhouse of the ACC during that time, and also major upgrades they made to their facilities in Clemson. And a lot of that was the fundraising work that Radakovich was leading. We were already seeing Miami talking about and starting to make more upgrades to their athletic facilities. You now have Alonzo Highsmith as the GM of your football team now. Uh, he started as a pro scout a couple decades ago and for the past decade had been working in the front offices, uh, NFL front offices in Green Bay, Cleveland, and Seattle former national championship winning player at the U and also a local legend from Columbus high school to the university of Miami. And then you've got Mario Cristobal. I'm not going to bore you with his resume because you guys know it here by now. So in, in a span of six months, you've gone from Blake James and Manny Diaz as the faces of your athletic department or your football program to Dan Radakovich, Alonso Highsmith and Mario Cristobal. And that's why I tell you guys, it's okay to enjoy um, and I love how people on social media are already just starting to throw out nicknames, like for the three of them together, a collective nickname. I think it was our guy VLKV on Twitter who referred to them uh, on the Locked on Canes Twitter feed as the trifecta. And by the way, you can follow us on Twitter at Locked on Canes. We will follow you back. So the trifecta was good. The best one that I've seen, though, was from one of our YouTube commenters, Joe Wren said Radakovich, Cristobal, and Highsmith. Wow, we now have our own holy trinity. It's all about the U. The holy trinity of Canes football. And keep that in mind, how important the alignment is, right? Because you know with Dan Radakovich, this guy understands football. 
and is going to be fully committed to making the football program consistently great because that's what Dan Radakovich does. Um, and you have so much alignment between Radakovich and Cristobal, and Alonso Highsmith is the liaison, you know, between the three of them and with the president's office as well. Everybody's on the same page. That triumvirate, that trifecta, that trinity, whatever you want to call it, that's what we need to stay consistent here, right? Because you look at the football coaching staff under Cristobal. We hope Cristobal does great things and is here for the long haul, of course. Um, you've got an all-star staff of assistant coaches. They're going to come and go, right? Because if Miami is winning, people like Josh Gaddis and Charlie Strong and Frank Ponce and, and Kevin Steele and Kevin Smith, like – if Miami's doing well, position coaches and coordinators, they're going to get offers for promotions elsewhere. They're going to come and go. But you've got to have that consistency at the top with Cristobal, Highsmith, and Radakovich. And, guys, that leadership is so important. And I wanted to share something with you guys. Um, I didn't get a chance to even talk about this on, on Thursday's show because there was just so much to unpack. That was the episode where we did the break, big breakdown of Alonso Highsmith getting hired. And if you guys missed that episode, I encourage you to find it, uh, the Highsmith homecoming episode. So I can remember one of the personal experiences that I've had over the years with Alonso Highsmith. This had to have been, this was uh, doing Hurricanes pregame shows right outside the stadium, right before the games. We had our big stage set up. It was me. I think that year it was me, Randall Hill, Darren Smith, Don Bailey Jr. was on set with us, and Alonso Highsmith. This was either 2013 or 2014. It was had to have been one of those two years. This was while he was in Green Bay working in their front office. He was down in Miami for a weekend to catch a game, and he jumped on with us and chatted with us on the show for a couple of segments. And something that has stood out to me to this day, eight, nine years later, is we had a very long conversation with Zoe, who was really passionate and really adamant about this, how important it was for Miami, for them to preserve their legacy and renew their legacy, that you have to have your own stadium. Like you have to have something on campus or nearby campus. I think nearby campus is a little bit more realistic. It's Coral Gables. It's, it's, it's a tough nut to crack and there's not a whole lot of space on campus, but having your own stadium nearby campus, like guys, I kid you not, Alonso Highsmith was like, he was preaching the gospel going on and on and on about this, inspiring me for several minutes about how important it was in his eyes for Miami someday and Keep in mind, this was eight, nine years ago he said this, but he was so passionate about it. I'm sure he still is to this day. How important it was for Miami to have their own building. How important it was for them to have their own stadium. Now, that was before the big-time renovations at what is now called Hard Rock Stadium. So I don't know if maybe Alonzo sees the stadium the way it is now. It's like, oh, this is so nice. I, but I'm just telling you, man. And the next time I talk to Zoe, I'm going to ask him about this. Remembering how passionate he was back then about wanting Miami to have their own building, I really feel like, in my opinion, that's something he's going to push for and help push for now that he's part of the administration, right? And I would imagine Dan Radakovich from, coming from Clemson, they have their own, one of the better atmospheres in college football at Death Valley. I'm sure that's something he would love. You got to raise the funds, of course, but I'm sure that's something he would love to have done here. Uh, you know, Mario Cristobal, uh, you know, apples to oranges, I guess. But when Mario Cristobal was at FIU, that's when FIU built their own football stadium. And I remember what a big deal that was for Mario. So Mario, Alonso, Radakovich, I'm just saying, right, at the end of the day, maybe they decide Hard Rock Stadium just makes the most sense. But do not be surprised if now this football leadership group, this trinity, really pushes to have their own stadium because that was something that Alonso Highsmith was very passionate about back in the day. I wanted to, on this episode, uh, read some YouTube comments. Uh, and I also have a nugget that I'm going to share with you guys on the other side. Um, we do have the schedule, uh, at least the first three games we have kickoff times for. We also have Mario Cristobal getting some more national love. At least I think it's love from Chip Patterson from CBS Sports. You guys can tell me if it's love or if it's kind of a backhanded compliment. But before we get to that, oh, I want to talk about our partners at Bet Online. 
They continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs. My Miami Heat forced the game seven. How good is that? Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen each and every day. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. Um, so replying uh, on YouTube to our episode about Alonso Highsmith arriving at Miami. Um, B. Mick writes to us, the U should have been operating like Carolina basketball, keeping it in the family. Well, okay, they're doing it now with Cristobal and Alonso Highsmith, but they did go outside. Well. I was going to say they went outside Miami for Radakovich. Radakovich does have, I think, a graduate degree at Miami. So he does have Miami ties as well. You know, you, you could consider him to be in that group. But, like, for me, it's not only about getting people that are, quote, unquote, in the family. They also have to be the right people. And so, to me, the whole thing about these guys, like Highsmith and Cristobal, the whole thing about them being Canes, I think that's the icing on the cake. Like that's that's the added bonus, right? Like that only makes it better because I would still want Mario Cristobal to be my head coach anyway, unless I'm getting like one of the absolute top, top tier guys. Cristobal is better than anything we've had here in a very, very long time, right? Uh, you know, a guy like Alonzo Highsmith is your GM. He's got so much NFL scouting and front office experience. He's perfect for this job and that it adds a little something extra to it that, they also have the Hurricanes ties as well. Uh, Gmo951 writes to us a cool story about Alonzo Highsmith. He said, when I was maybe 10 years old, Alonzo was in his first or second year with the Houston Oilers, and my dad and I saw him walking in the Galleria shopping mall. Alonzo was on top of the world at that time, and he couldn't have been more gracious and kind and humble to me. I remember seeing him and told my dad, Oh my God, that's Alonzo Highsmith. So I walked over to him and asked, are you Alonzo Highsmith? He smiled and said, yes. He walked probably a hundred yards with us to the closest department store so I could find a pen and paper to get his autograph. Bro, how cool is that? I will never forget that evening. He had the biggest biceps I've ever seen in my life. Oh, and if, if you want to see Alonzo Highsmith looking jacked, Go find uh, the old photos of him when he he had like a pro boxing career as well. And he he was freaking carved out of stone, like seeing him in the boxing trunks. Like he was in just an incredible kind of shape, incredible shape. Uh, Christopher Wright writes to us, I absolutely love what Miami is doing at this time. It's long overdue, but I don't care, he said. They are taking football seriously again at Miami, and I'm here for it. I grew up late 70s following Miami, so I've been here for almost all of the history. It's a special place, and I am sick of having to explain to these SEC fans that Miami just doesn't take football seriously anymore while these people live and die by it. Yeah, man. Um, no more excuses. I think that's the three words that best describe what's happening in Coral Gables right now. No more excuses. Anytime you wanted them to do something over the last almost 20 years, oh, we just we don't have the budget for that. There's no money. Now they have the budget because they're inspiring. They're inspiring boosters like Dan Lambert and John Ruiz that, hey, if you, if you donate uh, and you get in on this with us, we're going to build something special. Like we actually have the vision and the inspiration to do something incredible here. Gideon writes to us, homecoming Highsmith. Backwards still carries the same weight, right? Alonso will come at you from all angles, he says. He brings championship caliber passion. We've all seen him play. Well, most of us. Yeah, yeah. We have some people who watch that are so young that maybe they didn't see him play. But yeah, if you haven't, you can find enough stuff out there on YouTube to watch him. Um, he shares the coach's vision of a 360-degree staff Hey, team chemistry starts at the top, Gideon says. What we're witnessing is a potential dream team coaching staff in the making, and they will accept nothing less than flawless execution every play. Kevin Porter writes, swagger back to the 305, making the crib great again. Uh, Dennis White, uh, 
Uh, he, he actually, he's a little bit questioning of Cristobal as a game day coach, which is, and this, I think he was responding to when we interviewed Lee Sterling from ParamountSports.com, uh, who is uh, a award-winning handicapper. He was talking about some of like the in-game coaching problems that Cristobal had at Oregon. He says, um, Mario Cristobal isn't the best game day coach in college football, but he is one of the best recruiters in college football. But those Utah games and Stanford losses is what scares me, he said, about trusting Mario when it comes to beating the weaker teams. Well, except for Utah twice, they are the Pac-12 champions by beating Mario Cristobal's Oregon Ducks. So there's, listen, he did win a couple of Pac-12 championships. There has certainly been some good and some very bad as far as game day coaching goes, but my hope is, A, you learn from those mistakes, don't make them a second time, and B, you surround yourself with enough great people and you recruit well enough that your margin for error increases exponentially. Oh, and here, ah, I I just found it again. I read you this comment already from Joe Wren, but he wrote in Radikovich, Cristobal, and Highsmith. Wow. So now we have our own holy trinity. It is all about the you. Now, Not all of the comments that we get, uh, as we read you the one from Dennis, uh, I'll read you another one. Not all the comments we get are super optimistic and positive. GR commented on, uh, on our video about, you know, the one that was time to win the ACC, right? He says, more preseason BS hype. I've been a fan for 50 years and you young fans do this every year. Now, I should just stop there because the fact that you consider me 37 to be a young fan, maybe I should just take that and run with it. Maybe I should just end of comment. Let me just go on and, and let this person to consider me a young fan. But at least if he's been a fan for over 50 years, I've been a fan for like, you know, a little over 30 years at 37 years old. He considers me a young fan. Thank you, sir. He's like the type of person that would card me at a bar still. Like, thank you. Uh, he says, at this point, a 15-plus year span of futility, it's better to take a wait-and-see attitude. We are doing good things in the offseason, but will it translate to the field, he writes. We still have no depth, he says. A suspect O-line and an unproven secondary. We will find out who we are on September 17th. We all know what that is. At least this year, it won't be a first-game humiliation as in the past after months of talk and hype. So I, I think he thinks it'll be a third-game humiliation, not a first-game humiliation. And listen, um, your comment is fine. It's fine that you feel that way. I get it. There are people like me and even more optimistic than me who hype up Kane's football every single day year and we haven't seen it translate to the type of success we all want so honestly gr i would suggest if it makes you that upset to watch videos of people hyping up the changes that they're making just don't watch anything until after september 17th just live in that cave just don't don't even don't even bother um but listen i i get it right because if miami goes out there college station very very late start time we'll talk about that and, you know, if they get dominated, blown out, then um, we're going to be doing a very different type of show the next day, right? I'm not going to sit here and talk about at least that day, how amazing everything is. No, we'll be talking about what went wrong, okay? So uh, it is what it is. I'm going to bookmark this comment, GR. I will bookmark it. And let's say, I don't know, the next show that we do after the Texas A&M game, I'm either going to give you credit for it, for what you said, like, hey, maybe he was right, or I'm going to come back and say, you know what, GR, are you happy now? Have have they done what it actually takes to, to win your support and win your optimism? I will say, though, as I started the show with, when you talk about the uh, the Trinity that's now in charge of the Hurricanes football program, you can be excited for this. Like, this is not 12 years ago when – content creators, radio hosts, were trying to get you excited about Al Golden. Like, oh, the the coach from Temple. This guy's going to bring us back to prominence. This is not us trying to get you excited about 
hey, we fired Larry Coker, but we promoted Randy Shannon. We're going back to national prominence or Manny Diaz. Yeah, we're keeping, we got Manny back from Temple. We're, we're going to, uh, we're going to the national title. We're going to the college football playoff. I mean, I, I think it's okay. I, I think it's okay to hype up Cristobal, Highsmith, and Radakovich. You guys tell me if you agree. If you feel the way that GR does, where you don't want to say anything positive until they've earned it on the field, let me know. If you think we're being too bullish and too excited, you're not going to stop us from doing it. But if you do think we're being you know, way too enthusiastic, let us know in the comments or let us know if, uh, if you think we've been approaching this stuff the right way. All right, so before we get out of here, let's talk about the kickoff times. <laughs> Everyone's talking about this. So the Texas A&M game, which is the first, you know, big, big game that Miami plays this year, is going to be a 9 p.m. kickoff at College Station on September 17th. Bros, all this means is you're just going to get one hour less of sleep you know, that Sunday, you know, go, go to the later church service or whatever you have going on on Sunday, just push everything back an hour, drink your cafecito in the late afternoon to get ready for the late start time. I would tell you if Miami goes out there and puts up a fight or even pulls off the upset, you're going to be so charged up. You're not going to care that the game isn't over till 1230 in the morning, 1am, Like, don't even worry about it. And like, Okay, it's, it's one hour later than you expected. Like eight o'clock would have been okay with you, but nine o'clock, no, how dare you? The only thing is, though, there is a chance that it could even start a little bit later than nine, like 20, 30 minutes later than nine, because um, it's a double header on ESPN. They've got Mississippi State at LSU at 6 p.m. And so they're not going to – it might be one of those things where they start the broadcast on, like, ESPN News and then they pop it over in progress. I hope that's what they do. Like, I hope they start it on ESPN News and then they pop it over to ESPN when the Mississippi State LSU game is over. I hope they don't, like, wait for the kickoff until that game is completely over. But there, there is there is a doubleheader that starts right before that. So, yeah, the Texas A&M is going to be a 9 p.m. kickoff. So – have your caffeine ready, my friends. We also have kickoff times for the first two games. Miami's going to open up the season hosting Bethune-Cookman week one. That's a 3.30 p.m. start time on ACC Network. Uh, they play on ACC Network the second week as well. That's going to be hosting Southern Miss at noon. So 3.30, noon, 9 p.m., and we do not have kickoff times yet for after week three so that is what we are looking at to start the season so we love interacting with you guys uh we we had never done an episode reading youtube comments before so keep those coming for the podcast listeners you guys are not excluded of course you can hit us up on twitter you can hit up my personal twitter account at alex dono dono spelled d-o-n-n-o you can hit up the show twitter account at Locked on Canes. We do follow back. If you follow us at Locked on Canes, we will follow you back. So tweet us any Canes questions, comments, anything you want us to talk about on the show or tweet us about anything at Locked on Canes. And we will talk to you guys again on Monday. Brad Tejeda is going to be joining us on Monday from CanesInsight.com. We're going to talk some recruiting and we're going to talk a little bit more about Alonso Highsmith with Brad Tejeda on Monday's episode. So stay tuned for that. Hope everyone has a wonderful Saturday. A wonderful Memorial Day weekend. We will have a Memorial Day episode, though. That is when the Tejeda conversation is coming. So uh, no days off. Well, Sunday we're taking off. But no days off is the motto here for Locked on Canes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.